Good evening. We have a quorum at 6.30. We'll call the meeting to order. There was a mix up on scheduling um, with Zoom. That's why we you couldn't get in and it was late getting going. So we apologize for that. Uh, first up is Jonathan Carr. Uh, hi there. Hi, everyone. Hello. Um, I'm here to, uh, I guess, talk about a parking plan um, for our car cider house business on River Drive, 295 River Drive. Um, I was advised by Tom Quinlan to sort of expand our parking area to accommodate a tasting room we're, we're putting in by the farm stand. Well, well an outdoor, outdoor tasting area. Um, in any case, I, I forwarded a map to um, Mr. Dwyer uh, showing, uh, I guess, an idea that I wanted to uh, run by the board just to see if that it seemed like a good idea to you. It would essentially be to add, extend the driveway across the, the, the frontage of the lot. See if I can shrink this to a more manageable Right. Yeah, I guess that lower portion there that looks like it's on fire is my, my orange highlighter. Um, and it would basically be to extend the current driveway kind of across the lot frontage and to add yeah, another. Call, right right. Right. I don't know. Does that drawing, does that make sense to the, the, how, how big, how large is that parking area? I mean, how many cars can you put there? Well, um, I would estimate about eight cars, you know, if you allow a 10 foot width for each parking space. Is that, I don't know if that would, I don't know what custom it, it, areas. 10, 10 foot is normal. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh. You could get eight to the kind of uh, on one side, you could probably fit another two by the farm stand. So maybe, maybe 10 total. Um, is it, uh, are you calling for one curb cut all the way along or is it an in and an out? Yeah, an in and an out is the idea. Um, you know, so it'd be adding another curb cut at the at the other end of the frontage uh, opposite where we currently have our driveway. Okay. So w what happens if you get like, I mean, so you're going to, you're, you're talking a very small tasting sample. We, we are, we're talking like five picnic tables, outdoors, fair weather only, weekends only. Um, you know, we're, we're not really sure what to expect. Obviously, if we're swamped, we might have to go to a reservation system. We don't, you know, we don't want to jam up the neighborhood. Uh, we just really kind of want a low key uh, space to just, you know, get a few more people in. Um, I mean, so. I mean your, 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 your plan looks somewhat reasonable. Um, just be aware that you cannot park on Route 47, and if you do park on Route 47, I mean, if you had one car once a month, there'd be one thing, but if you start parking routinely all the time, um, you will be asked to somehow stop, um, to go to even go so far as to shut down your business. So be aware that if we approve this, um, you're going to, you could be tight on parking and you could be creating your own self a problem because you don't have much parking. Right. Well, um, let me just ask you then is, is having a wider curb cut, um, is that possible or is it, uh, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure what a wider curb, you could not have a continuous curb cut. No, because no. it will be a disaster pulling in and out and backing onto route 47. And yeah. Route 47 is somewhat of a busy street at times. So that yeah. would not be a good traffic design idea. Normally, yeah. standard parking requirements is two square feet of parking per square feet of building. Yeah. I don't know how big your buildings are, but I doubt very much you have two square feet of parking there. Now, you do have a little bit of a uh, uh, get, uh, get out of jail free card if you would because you are agricultural and you follow the agricultural exemption however we cannot waive every single requirement and you should be providing reasonable parking on your property right well i guess my 
my justification, I think, was saying like five picnic tables. I calculated square footage on that basis because that's just the only seating. So, so I guess I assume that the that this parking plan could handle that. And if you know there are people waiting around, then we're just going to have to ask them to move on. So, it uh, wasn't it the last time we asked for a demarcation. Where exactly is the property line, and how far off the property line? Will the parking begin? And Mark Dunn made a real good point. People cannot back. You cannot have people backing out of, on River Drive. There has to be an entrance and an exit so they can turn around and head out. Uh, right, that's the idea. It, there would be, it would be like a one way. It would be enter one side. That more clearly, uh, just the on fire yellow and red there. Uh, doesn't so, indicate how many parking places, where the drive is going to be, how they're going to back in and out. Well, no, it's showing. It's showing. So, is the north drive going to be your entrance or your exit? That would be the entrance, and then so they cars are going to come in. Yeah, they're going to go behind your shrubs. Yeah, and they are going to park here. So yeah. there is a line of shrubbery there. Yeah. So That's the shrubbery right. and the fence will be taken down or will they will that remain? No, we intend to keep that. Um, but then when they pull out of their parking spaces, they'll just proceed southerly and they'll pull forward into the exit and they'll be able to have a clear view of the road when they pull out facing forward. So the south driveway, the new south driveway will be the exit. Correct. Okay. And... Uh, do we still want to bring up that bylaw that was uh, North Lane, where there cannot be any obstruction for exiting a driveway? That's a that's the general bylaw. There's no agricultural exemption to that, so you'll be responsible for be sure um, satisfying the select board and the building Hello. inspector that you have um, you have adequate sight lines. And okay, well, we can trim that, the, you know, the shrubbery accordingly to make sure we have good, good sight lines there. Oh, I, I just want, I want to clarify, we're, we're sort of in an unusual situation here. We have some direct jurisdiction because you are in a limited business district, but we're also being asked to uh, sort of review this, uh, vet it for the uh, select board because they're the ones who would be issuing the uh, license uh, or approving the license. So right. um, that's why we're in this position that it, we're sort of sharing jurisdiction with the select board here, but they uh, did ask us to weigh in on it, which is, uh, but also because you're in a business district. Um, so the uh, Joe, to your point, the actual layout of the roadway uh, should be this line down here. That should be the edge of the right of way. So the what the buildings that have been built here, uh, the high tunnel, which is plastic, if I recall correctly, right, and the farm stand, which is uh, really a, a closet on wheels, um, are much closer than fifty feet to the the front. Now but the farm the farm stand is. 50 feet from off the off the frontage line. You, uh, the high tunnel is a little closer. You think there is 50 feet between here and here? I measured. Okay. Well, where, where is the property line? Uh, 50 feet? It here. seems like it's 50 feet from the uh, River Drive, but is that the property line? Yes. On, on the plot plan, this is the property line and not the edge of pavement. Okay. Didn't seem that way. All right. Um, I'm not remembering what the adjacent property have, but it looks like your curb cuts in and out are very close to your the edges of your front. I just wondered if there's any conflicts on any adjacent property, you know, that you would have traffic entering and exiting too close to each other? Uh, I can answer that. I go by here twice a day. 
Uh, the one to the north is a uh, field for horses. And nope. the one for the, to the south has a building on it, but the building is over in the area where my cursor is. And I'm not sure exactly where the driveway is, but it's not heavily used. Okay. So that's not an issue, good. That should not be an issue at that location. And then as far as the extra curb cut goes, would I have to um, get another driveway permit for that? Or how, how would that work? You should talk to DPW about getting another driveway permit for that. Okay. And they will, you can tell them that um, we, we've had a discussion with them in the past about being careful about issuing two driveway permits, but in this case, it would be appropriate um, and you can tell them that the planning board has looked at it. Okay. So the new curb could be the one on the south. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The existing one is on the north. Okay. I don't have any other concerns. Do we, you already talked about the sign, right? Well, I believe we approved the sign a couple of meetings ago. Yeah, okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the parking plan uh, subject mm -hmm. To reconsideration if it uh, causes problems. I would second that. Is it again, Bill? Approve the parking plan subject to reconsideration if problems arise. Okay. Okay, we have motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Good luck. Thanks. Yep. Okay. So let me get this out. And on a very similar topic, uh, Denise Barstow Mans. Hi. Hello. I'm Denise Barstow Mans. I'm coming to you from um, Barstow's Dairy Storm Bakery in Hockenham, Route 47. Um, it's a diversified farm stand from Barstow's Longview Farm, which is our 216 year old dairy farm. And we are applying for an entertainment permit. What kind of entertainment are you anticipating? Um, we didn't know that we needed an entertainment permit in the past. So I'm here making this right. Um, and we sometimes have burger nights where we have a band of local um, awesome old dudes that come. We do not pay them and they play for two hours. Just one night a week? It's like one night a month and it's not every month. Oh, one night a month? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, okay. I thought it was more than him. Okay. And they're done playing by seven o'clock. And is that, is that outdoor? Outdoors. How did you find out you need a permit? Um, we were on another select board meeting and they were here having a hearing for an entertainment license and I emailed Jennifer and asked if uh, that's something that we needed and she said yes. So okay. And you have enough parking to accommodate the people who come for your burger night? So again, this is one where we have sort of, we don't have necessarily direct jurisdiction, but the select board has 
asked us for input based on our expertise in sort of semi-commercial operations like this. And you said uh, it's over by, they're over by six? They so play five to seven. It's five to seven. And there have been times in the past where they've come like in the winter time on a random Sunday or something. So um, it's kind of just, you know, the entertainment permit looks like it's for the year. So we would do, it gives us the opportunity to bring in some other stuff, if I'm understanding that correctly. This is weekends? Um, the burger nights are on Tuesdays when they happen. Okay. Uh, so uh, is the five to seven time slot something you're comfortable with? Um, yeah, I, is it like. How about if we just say over by seven o'clock might be, might, might be more appropriate. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Uh, because, uh, the permit from the permit comes from the select board mm -hmm. and it specifies hours and you know who can play um so, but we just say over by seven and do they use um um uh, is this just acoustic or do they have uh amplifiers or they do have amplifiers yeah okay okay probably just say over by seven um uh, so just haven't heard any complaints from Shell, so it must be popular. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Mark. <laughs> and we would hear. I think Shell loves our stuff. When you uh, get a hamburger, oh, do you put it in a plastic or paper bag? <laughs> Subject to whatever the law says. It's kind of in joke here. <laughs> okay, so I'll make a motion to recommend the select board issue an entertainment license with uh, bands not playing past 7 p.m. Second. Uh, second. We get three seconds, so. I'll pick Mike. <laughs> I wanted to go on record. Any other discussion? Uh, I'm Kid Cut. Hearing yes. none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck, Denise. Yeah. Uh, next up, we had, um, I guess it's Joey Adams behind one, one, one glot, one. One plus North. Hello. Hello. It's Jesse Reynolds. That's me. Okay. Jesse Reynolds. Okay. And remind me the street address here. It's 71 Morris Plain Road. Okay. Lawrence Plain Road. Sorry. Okay. And highly mass. Okay, um, I did send around his uh, uh, his drawing, um, but I'll share it. It uh, he sent he sent me an email with the drawing at the end of last week. It was not attached. It didn't show up until uh, today, I think. But um, we had aerial photo about the red it. Line. I'm sorry, that's not it. This is it. Yeah, it's an aerial photo, I think, with a red outline. Yeah. Yes. Get this one out of the way. Correct. Yes, that's it. All the vehicles at the property are gone, though. There's no vehicles there. It's all cleaned out nice. Okay. And everything was going to be sealed behind the fence, I believe. So yes, sir. Previously, someone had been selling cars in this general area. Are they still doing that? No, not at all. Okay. 
What about during the winter? They're not going to be doing that during the winter anymore? Wayne passed away. Oh, okay. I, yes. Yes, um, I've been talking to her. She basically has like a couple cars left and she's just basically going to um, send them to the junkyard or whatever. She's not really looking to do anything else like that. Okay. How do you define that property line? That's the area that we rent. Well, um, that's the area that we rent that John said that like, that's where we can put the cars. But obviously I won't even be using almost not even half of that. But that's like what the area that I pay the rent for. Okay. So part of one building and the open area. Yes. Correct. Okay. And remind us how many vehicles you were looking for. I would say like 10, you know, if anything, obviously I would contact you guys for any more, but starting small. Um, yeah, I'd be happy with 10. That'd be a good goal for me, but who, who knows you know, what the future could bring. Okay. So, so John, John's going to continue to use that little first bay on the uh, Eastern part of the building for his, for his crafts and you're going to use the other rest of the building for your auto repair and sales no repair just sales yeah no repair you're not going to do any repairs no okay <clears throat> what was this again a class two yes yeah just use use cars like you know just Maybe hopefully in the future, obviously get my um go to, go to auction and stuff. But for now, I just look for cars around, you know, Craigslist, the Facebook, and just do researching and friends and family. Jim, is this aquifer protection? Um, no, he's just outside of it. The aquifer protection ends about. Uh, it's got kind of a funny shape. Um, but where the bill, where he, where the building and where he's using is not in it, the it's possible that along the road, part of it might be in it, but where the building is is not in it. Where he's outlined in red is not in the aquifer. So the ice cream stand will still remain? Yeah, she's still there. She works from 12 to 8, I think, every day, I'm pretty sure. I think maybe Sunday, she, like, maybe, like, a few hours different or something, but I'm not positive. But we're in the back, and we're not, you know, everybody's all nice. We all get along. Everything's good. I... Told her like I help her like do little things and stuff. She's happy for me and stuff like what I told her what I want to do. That's good. Uh, Bill, are you working on a? I, I am. Okay. So I'll make a motion to waive uh, further approval for use of an existing commercial uh, site for used car sales. Um, all vehicles to be behind the existing fence. Uh, will there, will you add your name onto the existing sign out front? Um, hopefully in the future, but I haven't done anything like that yet. Okay. still like you're just going to advertise online or yeah. yeah just you know just add through my name and stuff and i haven't even honestly picked out a name and stuff but like yeah keep it small and simple you know okay i'll just add to that motion to return for sign approval in the future so if you do put up a sign we want to take a look at it okay that's fine 
I would second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody. Hope it goes Have well. a great night. Thank you. you. Thank you. Wait a second. Please. Um, now we had uh, one person drop out and one person drop in. Um, Eric Schwartz, are you connected with Jay Jasper? Mr. Schwartz. Yeah, we are. Yes, I'm sorry. What can we do for you, Mr. Schwartz? You're on mute again. Hear me? I'm sorry. I had, I had to put my yeah. phones on. Can hear you now. Great. Yeah, we're we're a uh, cannabis cooperative, um, and had have been uh, recently taking a look at um, 319 River Drive. Um, you know, we're an ethical local business uh, that is looking to maintain the organic agriculture that is currently, you know, happening there, um, but would like to, you know, possibly enter into it from a adult use cannabis perspective, but also an educational perspective. So um, it's an area that we also wish to, um, you know, should we, should we get further with the property, um, you know, have education there in addition to um, continuing its organic ag agricultural farm, basically. I, I guess, I guess real quick from my side, we want to make sure first it's zoned accordingly um, just so we don't continue, you know, further with it. And, you know, we quite honestly just want to get an idea of the community itself as far as that property in particular and whether that might be something that, um, you know, folks would be open to basically. Uh, we're in, we definitely are in a research phase currently. Um, and I'm sorry, Jay couldn't be here today and I'm sorry, I'll turn my video on real quick. Um, sorry, Jay couldn't be here today. He's, he's actually working um, as an entrepreneur, sort of juggling jobs in our entrepreneur. So um, that's currently where we're at. But yeah, I'm sorry, I'll stop there. So yeah, we're just kind of looking to figure out if it's zoned and, and want to get the temperature of the community. Well, you're zoned agriculture residential. So organic, normal organic farming is no problem can continue doing what they're doing there today. As far as raising cannabis, um, that requires a special permit from the planning board. And we have, we have not issued one yet. If you grow any cannabis, there's a whole list of requirements to be grown inside, undercover, no, no light exposure, and on and on and on. Um, you will run into some, you may run into some severe resistance from neighbors. Um, somebody else had proposed a, another potential cannabis growing operation about, I don't know if it was a half a mile away from where you are, and the neighbors really made a lot of noise about it. So just letting you know, those are the facts. So in the agricultural residential district, you are limited to a tier one growth facility, which I believe is 5,000 square feet of canopy. So uh, is 319 yeah. the old. Mm -hmm. Got it, thanks for that clarification. Exactly, okay. where, can you uh, describe the location again, I, the number? Does I think it's south of Carl's excavating. I'm showing it's five college. It's the five college farm. farm. It's the Montgomery greenhouses. Oh, oh that, that land is APR. So uh, 
cannabis is not allowed. Is it APR land? Yeah, well, whole, again, we're still in our research phase, so. No, the whole thing is APR, Joe? Well, pretty much so. They carved out that cell tower there, but, uh, and then they had an agricultural exemption for packing flowers and for packing uh, their heirloom tomatoes. Uh, yes, pretty much, I think it's all APR. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would recommend, Eric, Mr. Schwartz, I recommend you go to the uh, assessor's office and find out exactly what is APR and what is not before you get into it. Right, and, right. Yeah, uh, Dan, Dan Zadonic in the assessor's office can direct you with that. Got it. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. Do you know, do you know yeah, the ahead, asking sir. price yet, by the way? Eric? No, no, not yet. Well, before you make any... Uh, right, that's why small, we're here. Well, <laughs> hard and grab three wallets so right. because you're up against some heavy hitters yeah the um just just to, by way of background the, the reason the mass department of agricultural resources does not allow cannabis growth on apr property is that they accept federal dollars for land preservation and they uh pour put the federal dollars in the same pool with the state dollars so Every APR in recent history has a piece of federal money in it, however small. And they have not seen fit to distinguish between, oh, this is state money, so you can grow anything you allowed to grow in the state versus, um, you know, they, they just say if there's federal money in there. And until it's legal at that level, we won't even consider it, even though it is uh a crop yeah bill, mr door yeah bill. that bill. we're definitely still navigating that yeah. bill explained it very well thank you okay all right anything else no that's it on my side thanks so much okay. all right good luck okay well we're here the first and third tuesdays of the month if you have any questions excellent Mr. Comia. Good evening, sir. Board, how are you? Oh, fine, how are you? Good. Um, all right, so um, I know that there's probably a couple of things that we're trying to work on kind of concurrently. I don't know as far as your priority, what you may be looking at. Um, I think as I mentioned at the last, meeting um and jim is aware of this that um pvpc is working on a model document or model set of regulations for battery or energy storage battery um still doing some of the uh, initial research particular to um regulations that it may may have been passed in massachusetts i think that it's still kind of novel um, but we don't have anything yet for that. But um, that was a question, I guess. Um, you know, as far as how you're, how you may be looking at um, your upcoming town meeting schedule, and if some, if that is something that needs to like be put first. Um, I, I think Bill suggested that there's no urgency here. Yeah, we, we would. It, it would be nice if we could get it for the fall, Ken. But it doesn't look very feasible. And rather than knock ourselves out, we'd kind of like to see what you, what the PVPC comes up with for that. Great. Yeah, we are working with, um, as I mentioned, we're working with three municipal planners um, that are in the working group. And I invite you, um, and I probably will invite you, Jim, to maybe a meeting um, to share some of the insight um, that you may have had um, with regards to that. And probably also uh, utilize some of the documents that um, you're the, the previous uh, applicant before you um, shared. Yeah, that'd be great, sure. Yeah, um, so we're, yeah, we're working. What, what, planning, what, planning, what planning towns are, what planners from where um, involved? I'm, I'm working with the town, uh, the, the planners from the towns of Munson, Ware, and um, Belchertown. Um, so 
um, where is um, has put a moratorium on these types of structures. Um, so this is important to them. Um, so they're, you know, gung ho about this particular project. Um, and I'm excited too, um, because we get to update some of our solar documents. Um, and this is still novel and um, new. Um, with that said, and uh, I am also sitting on a statewide um, working group looking at siting of solar. I'm actually the only person from Western Mass um, on that, uh, that state uh, working group. Um, there's a lot of folks from the, uh, um, some of the utility companies, as well as some of the advocates, I think they're looking at um, a whole bunch of different angles on how to approach um, siting solar in the future, um, and also within the context of their um, incentives that they do provide to communities. Um, so I think you know it's uh, it's it's been interesting being part of that process, but I look forward to sharing with the board um, some of those findings and some of those experiences, um, because I think it could be very helpful, um, not only for Hadley, but for um, everyone else out here in the Pioneer Valley. Um, so just a quick two cents on that, Ken. It's, in, it's interesting, the United States and different countries have different stances on solar. Yeah. My daughter is looking to put up, and her husband, a house in a foreign country where, they, where they're going to be living, and they want to put solar on it. And in this particular country, um, I don't want to mention that because we're on TV and stuff, but you must put up that you must use battery storage and you don't put your solar back into the grid. Oh. Hmm. So different places have different stances on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll say, Ken, I think we, we will get a better <laughs> product if we wait for the uh, for your uh, uh, model bylaw and uh, have some consistency with other communities too. We don't want people uh, just uh, darting over here because we're easier to, uh, to, to get through the permitting. <laughs> I mean, you, you already have, you've already made, taken a policy statement with regards to how you are looking at that particular technology and that using it as a, a singular you know, structure. Mm -hmm. um, so no one will be coming to Hadley for the moment, um, at least, you know, not with this board. <laughs> um, so what I shared with you, it, it, it was late um, and I apologize for that, um, but it's something else that we're working on um, that came up in conversation. And I had shared this with the board, um, uh, a an example from Granby, and since then I have uh, made some, you know, just uh, some some changes based on how your zoning bylaw reads and how um, your um, from from my experience in in working with Hadley for the past couple of years. Um, I guess you know one of the questions, and at the last meeting I reviewed the the discussion. It was to um, discuss how the, the land use um, permits were issued. I had made some changes based on a uh, recommendation from Jim on how uh, the, the board handles public notices. I think uh, the town of Granby's um, was, was unclear, um, but I think the, the way that it has been presented in your topic in your copy um, is clearer. Um, and that's specific to the requirements on how those public notices are published and posted. Um, with that said, um, obviously the formatting um, will be changed and um, there's, there's still some things to fill in um, with regards to staff people that may be um, um, useful or that may be useful at town hall to reach out to knowing that usually your zoning enforcement officer is the point person. Um, one of the questions that I did have, and I do recall this from a conversation, um, was that I think the town may have hired or was talking to someone with regards to like a land use coordinator. I don't know if that's something that's still happening or if it makes sense that that person kind of be aware of 
you know, navigating the permitting processes through both the, the planning board, the ZBA and the conservation commission. So we don't have a land use coordinator per se. Um, Shyla Davis was hired initially by the conservation commission to fill uh, the gap that was left when Janice Stone resigned. And so she's sort of the conservation agent, although um, she is relatively new at all of this and probably doesn't have, if there are licenses or permits required, she probably doesn't have uh, any of those yet. Um, but she is uh, providing um, both administrative and a degree of technical support to the Conservation Commission. And she's the one that goes out with maybe one member of the Conservation Commission to see whether the wetlands have been flagged um, properly. Um, she is also doing some uh, work with us. She's gonna be helping us with some of our, uh, getting caught up with our minutes, which will also give her an education in uh, what it is we do. Uh, so she's on her way to being a land use coordinator, but um, I would, wouldn't say that she would say she was there yet. Uh, I think um, work in progress. So it probably makes more sense to have the zoning enforcement officer be the point person initially um, at the town hall, especially since uh, Tom works full time. Um, so, okay, that's that's one of the questions. One of the other questions was your historic commission. Um, I know in some communities, um, they do have the power to regulate what happens in a historic district. And I know that Hadley happens to have one, I think. No, um, no. No. no, not an official one. Hadley has a historic overlay district. Okay. And it, it, it kind of is a, gray area. Um, if you're using federal money for something, there's a whole list of requirements you have to do. But if you're using anything but federal money, um, you, you really, it, it, it's kind of a, um, you must comply with the zoning bylaw. And we used to use the historic commission um, as a unofficial reviewer of architectural plans. And about what two years ago now, Bill? You know uh, I mean? Actually, more, probably about four or five years ago. They they requested not to do that anymore for whatever reason. So they've left it up to the planning board, and so they really don't have any say in what goes on, um, architectural wise, in the district anymore. And we have, I think we have three of them. We have the Russell Street and and. Uh, West Street Commons area. We have the center of North Hadley and we have Hockenham. Those are the three areas that are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Okay. And so I guess a question, a follow-up question, as I'm still, you know, I recall from my time as town planner that, um, you know, the community I used to work in did not um establish at the town meeting at the time those historic districts would give the power to the historic commission to regulate these these three um neighborhoods or these uh, historic um districts jim those are those have not been accepted by the town they've only been accepted as being listed on the national register okay. of historic places they okay. did they there was discussion at one point of trying to make particularly the West Street area a historic area. And when the homeowners that were down over there read what the re restrictions would be, they were not in favor of it. So okay. it, never, it never went to town meeting. That's very helpful. And we do not have a demolition, demolition delay by law. Right. What's that bylaw, Bill? Demolition delay. Excuse me. Yeah, we do not have a demolition delay like Amherst and other. Well, some, some area no. communities do. Okay. They, uh, we won't go there. We just don't have one. No, okay. okay. And the previous getting history, back to being very forward, and it's been it's been my observation that um, 
the applicants for solar, at least before this board, have primarily been Caucasian men. And for the benefits, tax credits, solar credits, whatever, are flowing, at least in primarily to that population. That, how it is across the Commonwealth that this is a program that could be interpreted as being racist in nature. Oh, geez, boy. Because it the benefit the benefits accrue to how do how do the benefits accrue to somebody living in the inner city or living in a four story? You know, what? they don't have a backyard or they can put solar on. That is what not is a basically. zoning topic. That is not a zoning topic. But I think it's a it's a topic. It's a topic to, this Commonwealth should start looking at. That because in my that, my that may be true. I, I think I, I would I, think I would, I would highly program. recommend we avoid it's that. Racist. <laughs> well, I, honestly, Mike, I, I want to get it out there. Maybe 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 from the from the Gazette report, start looking at that. Who's actually benefiting for all, from all these solar uh, deals that are going on? Yeah, I'm not That's, sure what that has to do with the role of the historic commission in Hadley zoning. Well, I could. Put, thought long enough I could probably find something. <laughs> Did the wasn't the underground railroad here? We'll uh we'll delegate you to to dig into that. Thank you. Oh, okay. But I just want to get publicly out there. I think uh something is amiss in how this program or has been put together in terms of benefiting everyone, every every possible citizen in Massachusetts, whether or not they have a backyard or a roof. That's all. Oops. Oh yeah, actually Mike, you may do better without uh without video. There you, there's a yeah you have a big uh, lag between um your audio and your video. Okay. And it's very okay. garbled. Yeah if you keep your camera I gotta shut it off. I I, I know my battery just told me it's ten percent left. So let's get moving. No more crazy questions, can I promise? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but Kim, from the historical perspective and the historical commission, it was a very active board that had input in everything that the planning board did for a while. And as it uh, lost its steam, its enthusiasm, uh, they just were not even getting a quorum to meet. So it was delaying some of our site plan. So they asked just to be removed from the, uh, the qualifications necessary to have the color, et cetera, et cetera, and architectural design. Yeah, thank you. Oh, my thank wife you. is, my wife is now on the historical commission, Adriana from Bogota. And she asked me a very, question the other day she said she saw a book in my library and she said mike do you think they know about this book written by Sylvester judd <laughs> that you have with yeah um yeah so um you know this this initial conversation was for you to take a look at what was um composed for this um i guess one of the follow-up questions is if there are any particular, um, and I, I'll just quickly share my screen, um, if I can. It's yes. Bill. I have to enable, but. Oh, I'm I'm able, Bill. Oh, you are okay. Um, is this this section too? So, you know, we talk about common permits and licenses, and we usually split them up based on the different types of permits. Oftentimes these are land use permits. So ones that would, you know, say that the planning board issues or the ZBA or the conservation commission. Um, but I, I guess one of the questions is, you know, are there any particular uses that you want to include here? We don't need to include this, um, but I, you know, I spell out at least some of the more longer, um, you know, aside from some of the commercial um, site plan uh, approvals and special permits that you may issue. Um, some of the the bigger, um, more uh, the ones that require probably a lot more application material like solar and cannabis. 
um, I've included, you know, within the text. Um, but I don't know if if this necessarily needs to be here or if you think that um, you know it it needs certain types of permits based on some of these initial headings that I have here. Well, I think we saw just uh, just a few minutes ago that um, Denise came in saying she didn't realize she needed an entertainment permit for the uh, what they were doing at the uh, uh, dairy and bakery. Um, and I suppose on the one hand, if you don't list every single thing, you enable people to say, oh, I didn't know I needed that. But on the other hand, if you, uh, if you don't list it somewhere, um, if, if the only person who knows you need it, it keeps, keeps the, uh, keeps the checklist in their head, um, that's not good either. So I, I think it would be useful. It may take up some space and have to be uh, weeded occasionally. But um, I, I think that, uh, yeah, there are things that people just don't realize apply to them. I, I agree, Bill. I think that's a good idea to have that list and just to have a little qualifier that it may not be complete. Yeah, that, that's for sure. I mean, we're gonna try to list everything, but there may be some omissions. Yeah. I think that would be helpful. I think our our constituents would appreciate that. Um, let me see if there's anything that's outstanding here. Um, a lot of this is general language um, with regards to, you know, uh, if someone were to arrive at this particular document at, at the town hall, what if I want to build a new home or business that says start at the zoning enforcement officer building inspector? Um, and um, I have some areas here that are in yellow. I know that the, there have been some updates to some of these processes, um, like the MEPA process, um, which probably is rarely. Um, uh, well, actually, I think, I don't know if Hadley, Hadley's privy to this, this particular um, MEPA process that's going on um, for some solar development in North Hadley. Um, I know Pelham and Amherst are currently going through this process, but I don't know about Hadley. Um, um, and then just, you know, these are more notes for myself, the ones in yellow. But uh, if there's, I guess, anything in your review of this, um, that will be helpful to fine tune. Um, I'm I'm just going to use for this particular section where it lists contact people, whatever is on the website um, and the office where you can find them. Um, oh, this is a question. The building inspector, and I know Tom's on the call, um, but if the planning board knows this, um, how that, if the, the how the, um, you know, is it is is he or she appointed on an annual basis? Is it contractual? Is it? I believe it's a three year appointment. I, I am ready to be corrected by those who know more. Mr. Quinlan. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm only when they when they signed it whatever two years ago, a little over two years ago, it was only for one. But Tim brought it up to me at the last town meeting that then they found it, it is three years. It is three years, okay. Yes, okay. I forget, uh, just found it right away in the clerk's office. So, and that's, so you serve at the pleasure of the select board, is that the- Yes, yes. No. So Tom, I, I know that um, we had just briefly spoken about, um, uh, Jim had provided the name of Shyla or uh, Bill rather, Shyla Davis, who works as kind of the conservation um, commission's support. Um, do you do anything for supporting the Conservation Commission other than saying you need to go to the Conservation Commission? It's actually a, a task on the on program. Okay. You know, so any permit that's put in anything, anything outside the envelope, we task it. She a lot of times can just answer, you know, the next time she's in, I'll check off the box and we're good. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I think that this this could be at, at least initially um, a great document for the the town. Um, if there's anything that you think needs to be addressed in here even more so, 
Um, and, and one of the things too, is I'm gonna try to go through the town's website to determine if there happens to be um, forms that I can just hyperlink on this document um, as, as that could be very helpful um, for people that may not you know, want to come to the, the town hall um, and can at least access the forms from home or from a computer. Um, but yeah, so this is the initial stab based on, um, you know, the task to develop a permitting guide. Okay, uh, Dee Dee, Tom and Didi, if I can get the uh, Word document to you, can you send it around to people on the project coordination? I think they would uh, like to be in on this early. Yeah, I think that could I think that could be helpful. And what I can do, um, Bill, is also qualify it if if it's helpful to you know the town staff that the planning board is we're taking the lead on this particular permitting guide, and this is coming from um, you know documents that we've used elsewhere. Um, let's determine whether or not your de particular department oversees these permits or who does. If yeah, if if they're located on the website or whatnot. Um, and just, you know, maybe list a couple of questions that, um, you know, Tom and Dee, Dee can share around town hall. That'd be great. If you could then, if you could put that, package that, and then send it to Tom yeah. and Dee, Dee. I will do that. And then they can get it around. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys hear me okay? I know sometimes. Yes. We're, we're Is that your assistant clerk? clerk? <laughs> yes. Yep. So um, I know um, for the permit program, they are going to be starting to do a thing where they are going, we're going to have a spreadsheet. So for everything that's going to come through as a building permit, so say a sign, for instance, or anything like that, it's going to be automatically uh, tasked off to like planning board or we're going to have a checkoff list of where it needs to also be tasked off for any kind of permit. So, you know, especially like commercial, all that kind of stuff. Those will be things that will probably need to be tasked off to you guys. So um, hopefully that's going to make things a lot easier too. Um, and, and it'll give people a better idea of where they need to start. Because a lot of times people put in permits and they have no idea that they need to go in front of you guys first or conservation. So I think that's going to help tremendously too. Dee Dee, and I, I think it is an excellent idea. And I like the way you will be taking charge <laughs> as opposed to uh, it's on the website. Just go look it up. No, it's a more friendly approach. Uh, sometimes when you call a bank, I mean, you get an 800 number and the other smaller banks will say, how may I direct your call? Mm -hmm. and, I think that's basically what you're doing. And I, I think it's a nice gesture and it shows a small town friendly atmosphere. We're trying to help people, not hinder them. Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, that's why I always try to show people, I even show them how to get onto the site, how to, you know, send um, their emails to Bill so he can then get everything ready for you guys. So then when the meeting's ready, he's got everything right there. So hopefully that will make a big difference. Dee Dee, if I may, if if there's a way, I don't know if you're working with a cert, uh, certain like permit vendor. Um, yeah. if, you, if you've already established some of those permits and if, if it's something that you don't mind sharing, I'd love to see like how you have initially have set up, um, you know, maybe like where you start out, what types of permits the building department would review and, and how you have those moving to the different uh, um, entities. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, you're more than welcome to come in and I can show you that part. You can also, uh, just by going on our website under the building department, you can actually uh, just go to the online permitting and you can view, because um, there are, are public records. So you can you know, view and at least get somewhat of an idea. And then I can always 
uh, show you the back end of it. Great. That's great. And and so this is, is this new for the town with regards to um, at least the building department overseeing electronic permitting, um, where you're where someone can submit a permit online. So when Tom was in um, Southampton, uh, that's where he started using the permit program there. It's called Permalink. And he had it in uh, Sunderland. And then we started using it in uh, Hadley and um, West Hampton has it now too. And Longmeadow, quite a few towns have it. And what makes it easier too for the contractors is that um, once they sign in once with any town with Permalink, uh, they can actually sign into any other town using their same email password and everything, which makes it much easier for everybody all around. Yeah, that's good. What we have found occasionally is that uh, people will uh, ask us how their permitting is going and tell us that they have filed electronically and they haven't heard from the planning board. And we have to break it to them that they didn't file with the planning board because we don't have electronic filing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we are working on that. Um, has Scott gotten in touch with you? Well, from, from I, the I, I, I told them they built, they had that they, there is a planning board folder supposedly on the uh, system. And I said, well, that's great. They built, neither Bill nor I have a planning, have a town laptop or computer. Can we use our own computers? Absolutely not. I says, well, then how do we get a computer? And Carolyn took a note. She says, I need to get, she says, who needs one? I said, well, Bill and I need one. And she says, well, I'll work on that. And that was probably a month or so ago. Okay, well, I also know Scott from the Permalink program has uh, things that are a little set differently. He does do planning board things also for some other towns. So I told him, you know, that he should get in touch with you guys and reach out and show you some different things. Cause I know the fire department is looking to do the same thing. Uh, Board of Health, they already started a program getting ready for them also. Okay. Um, and actually Terry, she has started uh, getting a good bunch of your uh, plans and um, especially site plans already scanned. Okay, so great. Moving uh, right along there. Well, maybe, maybe we ought to work on getting an office first. <laughs> <laughs> do we have an, Do we have any uh, any uh, idea of where our our records are going to be or are stored and are where are we going to be located? Right you know now, the, everything. You know the, go ahead. Yeah, right now everything is in what used to be the select board meeting room on the second floor of town hall. Yes. So along everything with, is dry along and with, pure. Along with ZBA files and planning board files and conservation files and go to tr trying to find our stuff, at least the cabinets. I know what is in some of the cabinets because they're the labels that I put on it when we used to have the same office years ago. However, if you go looking around in there, there's probably, oh my goodness, I bet you there's 30 file cabinets or more in this room plus all kinds of other stuff and less than half of them are ours. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice expedition to try to find a file of ours. <laughs> we can't hear you, Tom. I've never worked in a town between Terry and Judy. They'll have yours printed out. They literally call me. We're missing most of what you're saying, Tom. I'm sorry. Lean in towards her more. Uh, I was saying that between, between Terry and Dee, Dee if they're doing it, our, our uh, organization is unbelievable now what they've got. Um, even plumbing and electrical now are by street instead of by year. It was impossible to find you know an old permit or anything looking by the year. So we're in, we're in really good shape. So good. she's good. working on yours and should be about the same. Good. Right. The thing also is your scanner right now is in the that select board room, which makes it nice for her because she's able to pull your plans and you know get them scanned right there. So she's not having to go all over the place. So for that's, right now it works. That's great. Yeah. I mean that that scanner was unused for a good period of time. But as it turned out, that was one fine investment that the town made because it's streamlining 
I would say streamlining is maybe not the right word, but it's going to be helpful in the long term for a lot of stuff. Yeah, I cannot believe all the scanning that she has had so far that she's gotten done. So it's it's getting there. Good, good, great. Okay, what else have you got, Ken? Um, that's it. Um, I you know I know that um, part of the work plan too includes. Um, looking at planning board rules and regulations, which I think this can actually feed into and be a natural segue into doing that work. Um, I do have, um, you know, some of the documents that you've shared over time that um, I guess may have been uh, to address certain aspects of your rules and regulations and policies um, that maybe can be compiled into one document. Um, if that's something I think that the board probably wants. But um, yeah, that's just kind of the ongoing things. I guess if there happens to be any other work tasks besides those two things, um, I don't know. Is there any other topics, zoning yeah. related or master plan related? I think those, what you're working on is gonna help a lot. They'll, they'll, there's, there's, a, there's a decent amount of work there. Are, yeah. you, are you are you looking are you getting light on your workload no no no, no. i mean <laughs> I, I i just want to make sure that i'm doing um you know if the planning board has priorities um which i know you know some planning boards do um but this is important work and i would definitely um advise this be part of any work plan um is to do you know have a set of adopted rules and regulations for the board so I'm I'm definitely happy working on that. But okay. if there happens to be, you know, any additional research that you may be looking into or other things, I'm also happy, you know, to segue if I need to. So the one thing, and I'm not sure we want to make this a priority right now, but as you've noticed over the last few meetings, we're having um, issues with food trucks. Ah, um, I've noticed. And um, that's something that the bylaw, there's a town bylaw review committee looking at all of the bylaws. Um, so food trucks, uh, sort of the um, you know, temporary vending is apparently becoming an issue. Um, and it's an over, it has some overlap between the Board of Health, uh, the planning board, uh, perhaps some other boards. Um, not sure who licenses food trucks apart from the uh, Board of Health. Uh, I think maybe the select board does in some communities. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I would say that I wouldn't ask you to make it a task, but if you, as you come across uh, articles or discussions on those topics, if you started to um, open a folder for them. Uh, I think we're gonna get there sooner rather than later. Yeah. That's very helpful. Mike here, Mike here, I'm on my iPhone now. Maybe the tax collector should get involved too. Do we tax these things as meals? Okay. Oh, that's a good, good, good question. So at the moment, and I know this, you know, stems from, from, you know, having attended some of your previous meetings um, and also, you know, coming to Hadley often, um, wondering if this particular um, food truck was permitted and it's just something that pops in my head as I, you know, go to a food truck or um, see one. Um, is the town currently doing anything with other than just saying, Hey, planning board, um, what is your thoughts about the food truck? I know that you may have issued at least, you know, some sort of um, decision or 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 made a um, a comment in support of a particular food truck, citing certain conditions that you've placed on it. Um, but I know that you don't have anything currently in your zoning regulations, um, and are kind of, you know. Um, approaching it very um, appropriately where, you know, if you don't have regulations, but you still want to understand that there, there probably would be a role usually to determine where a food truck is located. And, you know, if there are any impacts to the neighborhood, 
um, that you would oversee or at least have, you know, understand that those things are happening in the communities. Yep, that's what we're starting to gather. The uh, the other buzzword is agritourism. Yep. Which is people saying, well, we just want them to come visit the farm and stay for a while and spend their money here. And uh, uh, and then that leads to the food truck and the beer truck from Chicopee. And, um, uh, and there's some overlaps, like uh, the gentleman who uh, you uh, probably saw said that, uh, well, I thought I, I thought it was okay. The Board of Health said I could put I could use it here. Um, so again, there are these. That's something we've been working on through this uh, development coordinating committee of, about uh, not letting people get out ahead of themselves by saying, "Well, he said it was okay." Well, he doesn't have the last word. Um, Mark. Mike here again, as I recall at the, la the meeting where this came before us, we we're going to let it roll until there's a complaint, then we're going to have to address it. So that was what was decided. Yeah. In the past, it was pretty easy. I remember when uh, Home, Home Depot wanted to have a food truck like they had in West Springfield. The Board of Health said no. And I remember Jim was pretty adamant. He said, no, it's just not allowed. So that was simple. Uh, so, so new philosophies at the Board of Health, uh, new directions. That's exactly correct. Um, or I should say, yeah, new priorities. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll gather information. The other thing, just touching back on the uh, master plan update, I think we do want to uh, maybe revisit that um, just to um, maybe next time um, you're in, you, you've already done the work on it. I think you've broken out who's responsible for what. Maybe we need to have uh, spend some time working on uh, us, you know, picking some, picking some tasks and assigning them. Yeah, I'm also happy to help, um, you know, engage some of the other, um, as I, as I work with planning boards, sometimes what happens is they're like, but we need to talk to the, this department or we need to talk to this department. And then I suggest like a meeting of all the boards. Um, and I'm happy to help convene that if the planning board wants to lead, you know, looking at master plan implementation. It's usually a big ask. Um, and if it happens to be a priority for the community, that's something that happens. Um, and I'm happy to help with that. Um, so yeah, I think at least the planning board can revisit you know, if there happens to be strategies that, you know, they may be responsible for implementing or taking a look at. As I mentioned to the, um, the housing production plan uh, working group is um, where uh, have it, we have a current survey out, a housing survey, um, and we'll probably be coming up with some um, strategies with regards to that by the end of the, we will by the end of the year. Um, that may involve, um, other than the, the, the planning board approving the plan, but may involve maybe taking a look at some regulatory items that the planning board would oversee during, in, in zoning. Um, so there's definitely a lot of work that may have been established um, you know, in, in the master plan, but I think it, it's always good to kind of keep tabs on that. I will say with regards to the food trucks, um, I am working with some communities on this agritourism and creating some standards for that and permitting processes. Um, I'll share, you know, um, with the board what what I've, you know, what I've uh, come to understand um, and how communities are trying to permit them and also be mindful that they're not trying to say no, but they also want to understand that there happens to be impacts, especially if you have um you know lots of cars coming into something that didn't usually have a lot of cars coming into um the property but yeah i will um go ahead and share those those resources um can uh, uh, someone actually told me that they saw that survey and were quite impressed and i can't remember where i could get my hands on it is it online is it just uh you Handy out your survey in certain locations on paper or it's online. I don't know if we put if it's on the website. If not, we should we should suggest that uh the town put it on the website. 
Um, I think it's, um, but you can find them. There's, um, I delivered a hundred copies to the, to the planning board's mailbox. Um, All right. It's in in the town hall. You can just pick it up there. You should be getting something in in the next couple of days, Mark. In your water bill, there is a uh, um, okay an insert with your water bill that tells you how to do it online. Okay. Give you both a QR code and a website to go to, whichever one you prefer. Okay, cool. I a, Ken, I had a couple of two questions. From, I mean, from two people. Sure. Why the hell do you, why should I tell you how much I make? Well, you don't have to. You don't, yeah. have, to. Yeah. You don't have to. You don't but, have to. Then don't. No, exactly. Why, why is it even in there? Most questionnaires uh, don't even put that in there anymore. It used to be pretty common. Well, it, it's only in it to get, a, to get an opinion, a feeling of the, the general income levels of people responding. In other words, are the richer people or the poor people advocating for this or that? If you don't want to put an income in there, don't. No question is mandatory. Yeah, that yeah, as as Jim put, the, there I think there's some cross tabulations that you can you can make, um, you know, depending on how good the um, the si the sample is. Um, and, so, in what street do you live on? So, I could. Check on the street, for example, um, Megan's Way. I'm, I'm sure those people are making over fifty thousand a year. So, uh, anyways, neither here nor there. Yeah, you know, the whole town lives on Megan's Way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put down. You live on French Street. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that now? Isn't Megan's Way now a town street? Yeah. Yes, it was accepted. Yeah. First million dollar home in Hadley was just sold on that street. Hmm. I thought it was on East Street Commons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Or was that Sylvia Heights? <laughs> I was right. I was, you know, I digress, but I was, I was riding on the rail trail, g giving my buddies a tour of the town. And I'm riding past East Commons, and I said, one of our planning board members lives in here. And from over a fence, we heard four doors down. <laughs> <laughs> Agri Agritourism, every once in a while, I'd go on YouTube and see how real farmers do it out west. I mean, we're gardeners here. There's no question about it. And this uh, one young girl grew up on a farm, she, uh, very popular on YouTube. She finally came out with some explanation. Please do not visit our farms. Somebody got injured or something like that. We don't want people hanging around our farms. Please do not come. So, and the same thing too with a couple of farmers here. Uh, they don't even want to be noted that they're farmers because uh, that's a uh, little aside. Hmm. Before we before we leave with Ken, our our new is do we have new legal counsel for the town? Yes. Does Ken know of uh, any of the, the people of the? So they're the same. Uh, I believe they're the same as have South Hadley in Hampshire County. Okay. And Deerfield in Franklin County, but Ken wouldn't have direct knowledge about. Uh, Franklin County. Okay. It's funny, Bill, because I'm actually providing services to the town of Deerfield. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is you there is the reception that you you brought to? When is it? This week for the new town council. I believe it's uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow or next week. There's a meet and greet, right? Yeah. It's at the light. Uh, the it's, the, um, it's the 16th, which is our uh, our next meeting day. Okay. Two weeks from today. Time? Uh, oh, at no. noon. And who is the council again? I'll, uh, I'll send the uh, invite around again. I think I did see it, yeah. I, uh, I don't remember the name. It, it, it's not a name that I 
can can reel off right. quite yet. Seems like the senior partner used to work for Koppelman and Page. I could run it better, you know, I'll do it on my own. Okay. Beautiful sunset if you're looking out the window. Ken, next meeting. At the board's pleasure. Um, yeah. I'd be, probably be able to at least, um, you know, working with the building department um, to at least navigate some of these initial questions regarding the permitting guide, I, uh, you know, a month. Okay. Um, we got a public hearing for 13 Russell Street on September 6th. Other than that, that's the only thing there. We want to try for that or on the 20th, which is wide open. Let's do the 20th. Okay. Very good. See you on the 20th. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. I'm just going to sit. You, we should set up a meeting for the uh, housing committee probably sometime early September, Ken. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. You can't hear me. Off. I have to press a button to speak. Okay. No, you don't, Mike. You're live. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Jim, Boy. I... What? I will email you. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't pick, give out the secret word. <laughs> okay. Um, ooh, I might have an invoice to pay. Hold on. I have just sent the town and council meet and greet notice around again. <sighs> It's a uh, Dwyer Associates or something like that. Uh, it's my uncle. Don't 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 <laughs> give it a second thought. <laughs> not a direct relative, therefore it is not con conflict of interest. <laughs> uh, I do not believe we paid this invoice. This is the one for Hampshire Gazette. Hampshire Gazette, and it's the ad for um, Amherst Development redeveloping the uh, Howard Johnsons. Hmm. Motion to pay four hundred forty-two dollars and forty-two cents to Daily Hampshire Gazette for said notice. Four forty-two forty. Four 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 two point four two. Point four two. Um, I'll make a, I'll make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. So Jessica did send me an email that she didn't. She had the plans, but she didn't have a filing fee or an application. So for now that you, for that one, Bill. For that one. Uh, I sent I sent them I will send it again but I sent them the uh, the uh, paperwork with it with a filing fee on it and they said they received it okay okay I will... uh, this this might have been a week ago or so ago I just told her that it would it was going to uh, it was going to come in when we had the file the uh, recording fee from the Gazette so uh, okay. it, it may have crossed that was that's not new that's old news perhaps. Okay. Okay. All right. Because yeah, I haven't given them the one for the uh, 13 Russell Street yet. But I did get a price on this. Why I'll get that going. That's, yeah. Okay. Okay. Did I want one comment to Bill Dwyer in your presentation about the affordable housing to the selectmen. Uh, I'm glad you recognized my comments. I don't recall giving Plainfield as one of the ones that was uh, not having any affordable housing, however. I, used to, I remember you say that, yeah. <laughs> I know. He, that was the straw man he had to throw off there. 
Well, you, you got to. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're, they have zero, and they have little, and they're not at risk. I, they probably want to do, they want to have affordable housing. They want to keep people there, I'm sure. Yeah. But, uh, you, but yeah. they're not going to get a 40B developer in there. Good point, Bill. <laughs> Did you see somewhere in, I don't know, in something I was reading this morning online, the reduction in young people going to school in Franklin County. Uh, oh, the enrollment was down. That's, hard that's right. Down like 45%. Was that, was that it, a lot? What's happening up there? Uh, that's probably because the Red Sox traded Christian Vasquez. Yes, that's right. <laughs> oh. Okay, enough editorial comments. Okay. Um, do you have, do you have any other updates on what the state's doing on Route 9, in case any of our listeners are wondering? It's going, it's going to be four years, and uh, they uh, there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, there there yeah, is an going. updated page at hadleyma.org. Uh, oh. We... Um, People cannot look to us for updates because we are not in the loop. Right. So we have nothing to offer. So uh, I, I'd send people to the, uh, if anyone asks me, I send them to the hadleyma.org on, the, um, on the landing page. There's the town calendar on the left and on the right, there's town news and they've pinned route nine as the first item there. Oh, sweet. And it will give you as much information as the state has chosen to share with us. Okay. I've also had citizens ask me, and I know you mentioned it at the last meeting, I couldn't remember what was going up in front of the Elaine Center. That's where they're moving a house. They're moving a house, okay. That's that one Barry Roberts is moving from Amherst. Oh, okay. It's just about one right. single residence across from the Amherst Creamery on Sunset okay. Avenue. Yeah. Okay. What, it's not a discovery. Okay. What's the date of the moving? I'd like to see that. It's going to be at night. Middle of the night they're moving. Yes. Past your bedtime, Doc. <laughs> Any time is past my bedtime. Either <laughs> <laughs> the eighth or tenth, and they start at ten o'clock at night. What time is that, Tom? And he started at 10 p.m. and it's either the 8th or the 10th, he thought. Okay. Thank you. That's that's going to be interested. Been a long time to, been a long time since we've seen a house move in Hadley. Pixie yeah. was the last one that moved anything. That was years ago. I remember they moved a tobacco barn that Devines converted to a bigger dairy farm from the Jakimco farm, Jim. Yo. And they has to use across our property and it was muddy and they got stuck in a ditch there. And I remember when McCreskey bought, bought a tobacco barn from the Sarzinskis and moved it onto their front land. I was just going to mention that. Yeah. I wish I could buy it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 the funny part of the story, Jim, is the fact that it got stuck there and uh, someone told my father, that he'd probably have to pay taxes for Divine's barn because it's been stuck in the mud for so long. <laughs> you can imagine the answer. I can imagine your father. <laughs> uh, anyways, okay. okay. Um, anybody have anything else? I have nothing else. I have nothing. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ken. So Thank much. You, Mr. Have anything? Mr. Thank Mr. you, Tom, Ken. Have anything? Thank you, Tommy. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Media history. Thank you. And thank you, Ken.